the purpose of this video is to give people a little <clears throat> idea about how to resize their brass so that it will fit in the chambers of their rifle, particularly the semi-automatic rifles. Um, what we have here in the screen now, right now is the RCBS Precision mic gauge. You can see that it spins like this. If you look very closely, there's a little hash mark right there that you have to pay attention to as an index. Um, it comes apart into two pieces, just like so. All right, and this is to measure from the base of the cartridge to what I think some people call the datum line on the shoulder of the case, which what we have here is a round of uh, Lake City M852 ammo from back in the day. This is head stamped 1991, all right? So this gadget measures the distance from the ass end of the cartridge to some nominal point on the shoulder. All right, now, if we take the cartridge and stick it in gauge, just like so, we can screw it down, and we get a nominal reading on this, all right? And let's see if we can get, there's our little hash mark, and there's the zero. So we are about four thousandths. Each of these increments are in thousandths. We are about four thousandths below the zero mark. So what does that mean? I mean, it doesn't tell us anything. It's just a nominal reading on a gauge. Well, what we need to do is calibrate this gauge. And the way we do that is we take the round out of here and we get out our handy-dandy set of Forster Match 308 caliber gauges. Uh, these are each in one thousandths increments. Each of these is one thousandths longer than the other. We'll take the one that is considered the industry standard or the SAMI spec for 308, put the others aside, and on here, hopefully you can see this, it's marked Forster 308 Go Gauge 1.630 inches. Don't know if you can see the actual lettering on the video, but that is what it says. So let's find out what that reads in the precision mic gauge. Again, RCBS Precision Mic. Now the reading we get on this is roughly four thousandths below the zero, okay? Which is the same reading that we got with the cartridge. See that little hash mark right there? It's centered in the screen. There we go. Four thousandths below the zero, right there. Alright? Just to make sure you're paying attention We'll put the cartridge back in, screw it down, and just a hair smaller in datum line measurement than the Lake City M852 match ammo cartridge. All right, um, so when you fire a cartridge in a gun, and here's a spent M852 cartridge that I picked up off the range at Quantico back in the 90s. Uh, this was being fired in uh, most likely one of the Marines M14s, one of their match grade guns that they were shooting back then. So we'll see how the fired casing measures in this gauge. All right, and there's our little index mark. All right, and we can see that the fired case ends up being, in this particular instance, four thousandths longer than the unfired case. This is significant because what happens is with a semi-auto gun, your brass is going to be ejected and it's going to be longer than your actual chamber dimension. I'm quite sure that the Marines match grade M14s were not chambers of 1.634 dimension. Uh, you can be quite sure that they were 1.630 right on the button, possibly 1.631, never any more than that, or those barrels would have been pulled out of service. On other guns like the FAL, the Sega, uh, God forbid the uh, HK series and the Setme series, that brass is going to stretch considerably in the shoulder area. And you may get a reading that's not just four thousandths over, but you'll get one that might be fifteen thousandths over or even more. 
But the point of this is, is that when you resize your brass, you have to full length resize it if it's been fired in a gas operated semi-auto. You need to push that shoulder back to the correct dimension so that it's somewhere down in this range with this particular gauge. Uh, if you just neck size it, it's not going to work. It will not chamber in your gun. It will be too long. 